Welcome to the joy of coding. Hello, and welcome to episode 258 of the joy of coding. My name is Mike Conley. I apologize for that. I had just done that sort of thing where the microphone, my, my, my microphone device, uh, I have to keep reinstalling the driver and then I forgot to plug it in and now um, I'm going to, I'm going to try switching to the microphone, see if it works. Check, check, check. There we go. Hey, all right. We're in good shape. Um, welcome to episode 258 of the joy of coding. I'm Mike Conley. We're going to be hacking on some Firefox stuff today. It's so good to see you. And there's a little black gap there at the bottom. Sorry about that. Um, let's get started. What, what are we doing? So I'm, I'm a little frazzled because of that microphone thing, but we're going to get through it. You know, uh, that's the joy of coding. So let me share my screen. Okay. Today is August 11th and, oh, uh, which microphone are we using here? Is this working? Did it, did we, yep. Yep. We cut over correctly. We're okay. It's August 11th, 2021. And it's, uh, episode 258. And a reminder, <laughs> if it's not immediately obvious, no plan survives breakfast. Things might go wrong. My microphone might just cut out on me, or you know, uh, my my computer might stop working, or we might get stuck. We might get sidetracked. Who knows what's going to happen today? Uh, but you know what I do know is that we'll do it together. And that's the whole that's the whole thing here. You know, we're capturing software development in the raw, so you get to watch me struggle and deal with stuff, uh, and hopefully fix some bugs. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the agenda, which has a bunch of these like handy links, you have access to it. If you're watching this on Air Mozilla, check out the details pane to your left. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's in the uh, video description. And if you're watching this on uh, Twitch, I'm about to drop a link into the Twitch chat. Hold on, let me right click, copy link, and drop it into the Twitch chat. Smurfd asks, did I forget? I shouldn't stream today. Yeah, so last week, I thought uh, I thought I wasn't streaming today. I thought today was a no stream day. It turns out it's actually next week. I, uh, let me write this down. I was wrong. I can stream today, but I can't stream next week. When I looked at my calendar and saw those unmovable meetings that I have to attend, I thought that they were this week. Turns out they are next week. So I can stream today. Boom, so you get episode 258, but no episode next week. My apologies. Uh, so what are we working on today? Well, I've got two bugs I was hoping we could look at. I got uh, tagged on that I, thought, I think might be interesting for us to check out. The first one uh, has to do with a panel. Uh, full disclosure, I'm pretty sure this is my fault because uh, the regression bug that was identified, the regressor, is one that I fixed. Um, but this is a, a bug where the button from the sync tabs door hanger is missing the label. Um, oh yeah, Smurfty says, maybe we'll see next week. It's possible that next week I'm also wrong and I just keep pushing it and you get a surprise episode every week. I guess anything's possible. Uh, you never know. Maybe I'm really just bad at reading calendars. So this was filed two days ago, um, by Robert Martin. And I've got a build going in the background, so I apologize if uh, if my machine's a little uh, temperamental. It's it's under heavy load. Uh, so this actually affects 91 as well as 92. So this is something that's actually slipped out into a recent release candidate, which is unfortunate. But maybe we can uh, maybe we can uplift a patch. I don't know. Um, it affects 92A, which Wait, what's 90 what what version am I on right now? I'm on 93. So it affects beta. It's going to affect release and it affects nightly right now across all platforms. This is bad news, but the fact that it got filed so only recently, you know, I wonder if it um Yeah, I'm wondering why I'm only hearing about this now. It's not a great experience. Have Firefox installed, have no Firefox account signed in, open the Firefox browser from the profile from prerequisites, customize the toolbar and put sync tabs into the toolbar, click on the done, uh, yeah, exit customize mode and click on the sync tabs item. We would expect the sign into sync label to be displayed, but the button has no label. And apparently I caused this. Uh, let me take a look. So I'm gonna assign this bug to myself, looking. Uh, 
91 released on the 10th. Oh yeah, yesterday. So it's going out, this bug is going out to release right now. Uh, my bad, my bad. Maybe we can ride a dot release uh, if we can figure out a fix. So the first step with any kind of bug like this, now that I've got a fresh build, let me pump up the font, is to see if we can reproduce it. Are we able to follow the steps and get the same same issue? Because if we can't reproduce it, that makes fixing this bug a lot harder. So the steps were, uh, let's go back to here. We want to customize and put synced tabs in the toolbar. Don't be signed in. Uh, yeah, have, oh, have Firefox installed, but have no Firefox account signed in. So that's no problem. I'm not signed in. So we're going to customize and we're going to put synced tabs in the, uh, in the toolbar here. We'll click on this. Yeah, I can totally reproduce this bug. Look at that. That's that's terrible experience. Let's see if there are any uh, any errors. I don't see anything showing up in the uh, console. Let's open up the inspector or the browser toolbox rather. On uh, so I recently found that there's a really great keyboard shortcut to open up the browser toolbox because before I used to go menu button more tools browser toolbox, but there's a keyboard shortcut. It's pretty convoluted, but it's shift on mac os anyway anyways it's shift apple alt well whatever option sorry shift apple option i uh, and that will get you the browser toolbox which has become my go-to way of opening the toolbox so now that i got the toolbox open because we're dealing with a panel uh i'm going to use this mode disable pop-up auto hide to keep the panel open so it doesn't disappear on me um so now it'll stay open and now let's take a look at this thing so this button, it does have a label, but why isn't the label appearing? The label is hidden. I can tell that the label is hidden because it's grayed out here. The label is hidden because it's toolbar mode. The toolbar mode, toolbar, the mode, is, what? We're in mode icons in the toolbar. How would this have affected this? Here's the regressor, the regress regressor apparently. And this is in like synced stuff. So what is this node called? Remote setup. Hmm. Is this a regression from from this patch? Protections, identity panel got touched, protections panel. So I want to know when this worked and what made it work. Oh, could it have been this? Panel, CUI widget panel. Is that what we have here? A CUI widget panel? Yes. Toolbar button text, text align start, display moz box. I think it's this. This removal caused the issue. Now, why did I remove that? Because I said, hey, if you're a sub view button, use this rule. Remove the panel. We keep the panel. We remove the class switch. The markup styling over completed. The proton styling. Oh yeah, I wonder if that's what we should be using instead. Making this a sub view button. Like if I say sub view button. Huh. Nope. Um. Now it's disappeared. Even though this is like. It has height. That doesn't. This apparently has height. 
Where? Oh, it's like all sty styled all wrong. Okay, well, this is a special case, I think, where we're going to want to... Um, I'm going to remove that class here. A special case where we want the toolbar button text to have these rules for this particular button. I hope there aren't other buttons like this. It's a bit weird that this is a toolbar button, to be completely honest. Um, what are other things that are applied to it? The remote tab setup sync button. You know, there are other similar buttons like the sign in button. I wonder if those are also affected by this. Like if I go to, um, no, not settings. So we were in synced tabs. Is there like a, well, you know what? This button actually doesn't appear if you're not signed in. So there's nothing to do there. Um, remote tabs. That's what synced tabs is. So I have, I am at fault here. It was my bad. I'm just trying to figure out what the right move is now. Whether or not we want to special case this one button. Or not. Are there already special cases for this stuff? There are. This is where we, okay. I think this is what we want to do. I think, wait, no, this is the wrong rule. It's the wrong rule. Panel UI 883, yeah, this one. Yeah, this comment's all wrong too. It's all out of date. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say display moz box here. Or is that the yeah? And that does it. I think that's what we want to do. There aren't too many buttons like this, but I think this will be our solution. Okay. Let's write a patch and then let's see if maybe we can ask about this being a, a ride along in a dot release. Uh, first of all, what does this do when I click on it? Oh yeah, it sends you, sends you here. Okay. All right, let us, uh, well, shoot. I forgot where we, uh, where we just modified. I think it was... Yeah, when, when we say important to override. Which one? Is it that one? There's another one down here. Yeah. Okay, so it's this one, not this one. Subview button. It's this one. So line nine. 01 to 906 in panel UI ink.css. All right, let's. I'm going to close a bunch of this stuff because we don't need it. This is from a different bug. Uh, panel UI ink.css, line 901. Now, this, what it's referring to in this comment is, I think, no longer relevant. Let's actually, uh, I'm going to open up this build again. I can confirm that. What is the text align on this label? Yeah, there is no, we don't need important, I think, anymore, which is good. It's always good to drop important. So if I say over here, uh, display 
moz box and then get rid of this important that's fine I can probably just get rid of both of those rules to be completely honest because yeah we're not overriding anything anymore so I think I can just replace that with display moz box. And is the icon, like what's going on with this icon? This icon is here, it has no dimensions. Okay, that's fine. It's a bit weird, but let's go for it. So we're gonna replace this with this. And let's write up our commit message because I think that's gonna be where uh, where most of the information is going to go. Okay. Uh, ensure synced tabs sign in. C to call CTA stands for call to action. It's like a sign up button. It's call to action. Ensure sync tab CTA label is visible. Sync tabs panel CTA button label is visible. Uh, and I'm gonna, who, who am I gonna ask to review this? I'm gonna ask Molly to review this. Did Molly review my other? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I actually wanted to say more. In bug. What was the bug number? This one, bug, such and such. Uh, a, a rule was removed that made the label, uh, a general rule was removed that made the label for the synced tabs panel call to action button visible call to action button visible uh, and I will link to that set uh, that few lines here can I link to several lines nope I can't do shift click no okay uh, well I can at least like Uh, this in this uh, since that rule isn't around anymore, uh, we tell the uh, sync tabs button explicitly to display itself. Thankfully, we no longer need to override the um, text align. I wonder if we still need to, like the text shadow. It might be, let's keep the text shadow one because I'll bet you that that's for other platforms. Thankfully, we no longer need to override ride the text align property uh, since that was in the original rule. All right. Now, should I? Maybe I should be sure about this text shadow. If I boot up Windows, I wonder, I wonder, let me boot that up in the background. Maybe we can take a look on Windows and see what that's like. Hang on, just one sec. Okay. 
here is my Windows machine. Let's open up Nightly. This is a Windows VM. And customize. Wait, am I signed in? No, I'm not. Good. OK, no, nope, not help. Customize, sync tabs. OK, so now let us do the same thing. Now on Windows, the command shortcut I think is Control Shift Alt I. Yes, it is. Disable. And let's open that up. Inspect. Uh, okay, so let's put this rule in. We're going to say display Moz box. And let's get rid of these two things. So we can get rid of that. Now, I don't know if that changes the appearance. Is there a text shadow that's being applied? No, it's, there's already a rule to remove the text shadow. Yeah, so I think we can get rid of like, is, And is that being used by everyone? Remove the text shadow. Um, let's see. Yeah, text shadow is already being removed. We don't need this. Um, and the text shadow is already being. Uh, and is there is there a text shadow even to to have to deal with like? If I get rid of that rule down here, is there even a text shadow? There's another text shadow none. So I think no matter what, there's no text shadow. But at least, uh, and the text shadow is already uh, being set to none in another rule, another rule for this button. So um, let me go ahead and get rid of the text shadow, none. SmurfD says to try a different range URL. So we were trying to get that a range. Let's see. Let's see if it takes it to 7.15. No, it does not understand it. Now, SearchFox, on the other hand, does. But um, I don't know if I want to link to a SearchFox thing. Um, cause like finding this in search box, this removal is harder, I think, than, um, than using HG web. Okay. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to push that up for review and, uh, and see what submit tip single. Oh, what? Pip3 install mozfab. Somehow six get removed. Yeah, there we go. Okay, what happened? Why was six removed? SmurfD says they were just guessing. Yeah, uh, it was, I'm glad we tried. Sometimes you get you can find secret features like that. It'd be cool if you could select ranges because like that's a great way of communicating instead of just sending someone to a line of code you want to maybe show a selection a couple of different lines not even continuous selections that's one of the nice things about search fox you can do like you can uh show a range and you can also do like non-continuous sections like this which is pretty great and then you can send someone a permalink very handy okay so this is up for review Let's just make sure that the uh, the review request looks good. Ask Molly for review. B Booyah. Okay. Let us move on to the next bug. So, uh, patch posted. And if we're lucky, maybe we can get that into a, a ride-along 
Maybe I should double check and make sure that the bug flags are set correctly. So that um, affected, affected, 90 is unaffected. Uh, for the for release managers looking for cheap ride-alongs, presuming this uh, gets R plus and lands, this is a really really simple bug fix. that I'd be happy to request uplift for. Okay. Um, let's move on to the next one. So the next one was uh, this bug that I was need info on. So we have this uh, performance test called TART. Oh, TART and I go a long ways back. Tart. Tart is a an acronym. It stands for Tab Animation Regression Test, I think, or Responsiveness Test, or Tab Animation Something Test. But it's Tart for short, and um, it tests the smoothness of our tab animations. That's probably not super surprising. And I have a love hate relationship with that test. Because uh, one of the things I worked on early days for Firefox desktop, performance-wise, was trying to deal with a regression in our tab animations. That's where I really sort of learned techniques for dealing with performance issues, was dealing with TART. So it taught me a lot, but it was also like this big boss that I had to fight. Like if, it was, if this was a video game, it was like, it was a boss <laughs> that I had to take out. And it's not a very fun test to hack on. Um, you know, the, the, it's, it's a little bit circuitous inside and, and it should probably be rewritten, but it's an interesting test, I guess. And anyways, this test attempt, one of the things we just realized is that we attempt in the test to use a fav icon, but that fav icon does not exist. And recently, um, Heist landed some, uh, basically some assertions in our code to make sure that we don't actually try and access um you know these uh internal what we call chrome uris or like th this is how our script and markup accesses our like local assets this has nothing to do with the web browser that's about like getting access to the like ui assets like images style sheets um you know script that sort of thing and this fav icon that the test uses, because it, it uses a test that has a fav icon in it, uh, apparently it doesn't exist. And then the assertions that Heist added fail, and that causes infrastructure failures. So that ultimately, I think what ended up happening was that um, uh, the tart.ico file uh, was added to like this allow list of things that were like, okay, well, this is an issue. We should fix it. Uh, and... And then we can remove it from this allow list so that we uh, we don't have to deal with the problem anymore. So let's uh, it tart you a lot. It <laughs> oh, Smurf D, you speak my language. It did tart me. It tart me a lot. Yes. Oh, uh, that's my kind of joke. Hey, a friend of mine, a friend of mine taught me a joke. Uh, it's not a very good joke. These are like dad jokes. I'm not a dad, but like these are dad jokes. I'm going to show you a dad joke. You want to blow someone's mind. My peripheral vision is incredible. I, 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 I'm going to demonstrate how amazing my peripheral vision is. I'm not even like I can see my hand out the corner of my eye. Check this out. Two. Four. One. Five. Peripheral vision. Just blowing people's minds. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that's a stupid joke I learned over the weekend. Um, so yeah, we got to figure out what what the deal is. So this test uses this uh, this fav icon, and apparently it's missing. So maybe it's a problem with generating the 
uh, package, the uh, the XPI package, the reference. Okay, let, let's reread the bug. As in the summary, TART attempts to use this icon, but it doesn't exist. See this bug for context. So this context bug is about the assertion that Heiss added. And there's an infra failure. And that, that's whenever you, you know, remove this thing, we get an infrastructure failure, which is what we expect whenever we have one of these assertions. I don't know how this impacts the results, but it's broken. I'm particularly worried because the title of this says, just another blank tart page with an icon. And well, there's no icon. The reference in tart.html appears to work as far as I can tell. So here, this reference appears to work. I think the problem is what happens when we try to load Chrome Tart content blank icon HTML, which in turn tries to load Chrome Tart content tart.ico. I'm additionally confused because this document appears to attempt to package the file, but I don't know where the XPI we actually run with comes from or how to inspect it. Mike, could you take a look at what's wrong here and what the impact of the test would be? That is our job. Smurf D is seems to be enjoying my joke, I think. Either really enjoying it or groaning, I can't tell. But uh, a joke was for you, Smurf D. So yeah, uh, let's find out what's going wrong here. So the way our Talos tests work, Talos is, is like a very old performance test suite that we have. Let me update to central. And we'll build again. And we're gonna run the TART test, so just so you can see it and, and see what it does. I'll show you how to run the performance test. So with a build of Firefox, you go um, mock talos-test A-A. -A. I guess that's telling it which test to run, and then you say tart. That's the name of the test. And so if you do that, it spins up a whole bunch of infrastructure and maybe installs some things. Um, and then eventually, yada, yada, yada. It's been a while since I've run Talos, so it's going to go get a bunch of like packages and run some stuff. Setting up my virtual env. This doesn't have to happen every time. It's only the first time if you've blown away your object, or object directory. Sorry. And all right, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Installing everything, installing the world. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we're gonna run our test. First, uh, it does like a quick scan of what the operating system. Okay, so yeah, I'm seeing the fav icon missing there. It should be there, it's not there. Very interesting. Now that one is here, like this, this, that one's working, this one is not and we should figure out why. Okay, so this test runs, it's running a bunch of cycles. We don't have to do that. We're just gonna need to run it once. Uh, so shut everything down, shut it all down. Shut them all down, hurry. Let's open up the, the test code. So the test code is under, here where we are. Oh, I'm also gonna shut down my Windows VM. That's probably taking up CPU and memory. Uh, we're gonna go under uh, testing, Talos, Talos, and then I think there's under tests, there's one called Tart. And let me just remind myself how Tart works. So the way that Talos tests generally work, is there is a like, a Python class that describes the test and gives instructions on how to load it. In this case, we're telling the test runner to load this manifest and install this add-on, both the page loader add-on and this uh, uh, tart add-on. We set some prefs uh, and we tell it to load this tart manifest. This tart manifest is what page loader is looking for. So tart manifest says okay now as soon as you start load this document which is this document right here and what it does is oh there's a bunch of gunk in here 
is this document correctly uses tart.ico because it's here, so that works. And what it does after we load is we run this init function. See, this is, I am not, I do not enjoy <laughs> this, this test, the code for it. And we are running with auto. That's one thing to look at here is like there's a, a fragment at the end that says auto. So we, uh, we run init. Wait, where am I? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, we run init. We say auto is true, so we go trigger start. Trigger start runs. We update some config. We run the test. Running the test means to send, to call this function Chrome exec. Chrome exec is a, is a function that sends this event, which I believe is what the add-on is listening for. Uh, Chrome exec event, yeah. And when it sees that event, it sends a message. It's very, it's a Rube Goldberg machine. This is a Rube Goldberg machine. But ultimately, uh, there is an install of some kind. Um, oh, you know what? I think I see the issue. The icon is missing from the Chrome directory. So whenever uh, so whenever this document is loaded, what's actually happening is it's not being loaded from the add-on. It's being loaded from a, a server that that uh, Talos runs automatically, and it's running it on localhost. In it's it basically it's running a, a web server right at the top of the Talos directory, and it's navigating us to this document, tar.html, and so tart.ico is pointing to this one. But when we load this blank icon, it's it's asking for tart.ico for blank.icon.html, and its directory is within the add-ons like named scope, which is what Heist was talking about. It's like Chrome, excuse me, colon slash slash tart slash content, slash tart.ico, which is missing. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and copy. Well, first of all, is there, what's the, how does the manifest work? Manifest, it's a web extension. So I think all I have to do is just put the tart.ico inside of Chrome here, right? I think that will work. So copy, testing, Talos, Talos, tests, tart, uh, tart.ico. I'm going to do hg copy to testing, Talos, Talos, tests, tart, add-on, chrome, tart.ico. Okay, now let's rerun the test. Now let's see if that uh, that icon shows up. Here we go. Yep, I see it. I see it. There it is. There it is. It's working. Okay, so that that should do it. We can shut down now. Let's shut down. Stop, stop, stop everything. There's also this question about like the generate tart XPI. I don't think anything actually uses this. We can probably get rid of it because it's it's expecting like this old school yeah this old school extension type and that's no good so we we can get rid of that as well um so how do we how do we start we're basically going to do three things I'm going to say uh, bug such and such. Make sure to package tart.ico with uh, tart add-on uh, web extension. 
and I'm going to have Sparky review that. Um, the Tart web extension tries to uh, use tart.ico inside of blank.html. What is it? Blank.icon.html. Tart.ico. But it's not, it wasn't hosted there. It wasn't included in the web extension pack uh, uh, package. It wasn't included in the web extension, so that results in a missing fav icon. Uh, this copies tart.ico from the root of the tart test directory where the um, test launcher document which is not which is perhaps confusingly not part of the add-on uh, uses Yeah. Okay. So we're going to commit that. That's easy. Uh, it's a copy. Uh, and then we are going to remove the assertion. Or the, sorry, not the assertion. We're going to remove the... Um, the special casing for tart.ico in net util line 3402 we can get rid of that uh but same bug but i'm going to do it a separate commit because that's probably going to be a different reviewer uh remove tart.ico ico um uh what would you call that it's not uh, tart.ico it's like a workaround it's like um from broken i guess it's from an allow list from broken chrome uh uri allow list and I think I can, can I get Heist to, I'll get Heist to review that. And then the last thing is I'm going to get rid of this generate tart XPI thing. I don't think anything uses it. I don't think it's helpful. Yeah. Um, HGRM testing Talos Talos. I think it just adds confusion tests uh, was there another there's another generate in here generate T resize yeah don't need that generate T resize does anything use this Apparently, please install the add-on to run the test locally. Yeah, I don't know. I think this is... I think this is not useful anymore. Because T resize, I believe, is also a web extension. So you can just like install it from this manifest.json. That's all you need to do. Uh, so I'm going to remove the other one as well. Testing, Talos, Talos, generate, T resize. And I'm going to update that documentation. Um, 
generate. Yeah. To run resize locally without TOS, please install the add-on. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna point instead of pointing to this document. I'm gonna point to. Whoa. What? Why isn't Oh yeah, because of raw file. That's what's happening. Raw. There we go. I'm like, what is going on? What? It's interesting. It's it's it almost like a directory dump. Um, I think if I just do like raw, no. Maybe if I get rid of. How do I just browse? Okay. I'm going to say testing, Talos, Talos, tests, T resize, add on. Okay. Now, can I get a permalink here? Maybe it'd be easier to, yeah, revisions. Um, annotate, add on, slash. Come on. Oh, don't annotate, uh, browse. So file. Can I do that? Are you gonna like that? Yes. Okay. So please install the add-on to run the test locally. Please install the add-on in about debugging. Uh, about debugging should let you just like do that. So for example, if I just run mock run and I go about debugging um, this nightly load temporary add-on and then I go into Mozilla Central testing where is it? Testing Talos Talos tests T resize I believe I can just go to like manifest.json and it will just install it yeah install this so I've done that now how do I run it what does T resize expect Uh, it wants me to go to this t resize test.html, which is uh, this t resize Chrome run event location search. Yeah, this is garbage. It's really not designed to be run really separately now. Maybe it's just easier if I say, if I just remove this line. Um, cause I think that's, that's more accurate. You're not going to confuse people. And then is there another use of generate XPI or T resize in perf docs? 
Oh, there's generated RST. Do I, should I like not? Docs generated. Maybe I should not alter the generated ones. Yeah, so let me put that put that the way it was. And instead go to where the actual non generated generate t resize which is perf docs index what that can't be right perf docs slash talos perf docs index there we go generate There we go. All right. Now I don't know if I have to do anything in order to generate regenerate these docs. Um Talos Where am I right now? Talos perf docs. Is there like a static only manifest non named Talos index? Yeah, how do I like regenerate these? Is there anything special? Let's take a look at the last time index.rst was was touched and see if anyone else like like how it worked. Basic documentation. Yeah, generated was touched um, so how do you generate it like is there um I think I'm gonna have to ask unless it's completely obvious maybe before I do that I'm gonna look for a command for perf docs is there like perf docs Mozilla Perf docs is a tool. Make sure all the performance tests are documented in tree. It's only used for documentation verification to run locally. Perf docs. Does it? Then the future will also auto generate documentation. So maybe that's what it does. So like configuration file. So what if I run mock lint linter perf docs, what happens? mock linter or lint linter perf docs go 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 there are some questions that have come in um and that i will address next before i end the stream uh, while I'm waiting, let me just check to see if anyone's had a chance to review that patch I wrote earlier. Maybe we can even land it. Let's see. No. Well, while we're waiting for this, maybe I can get to some of those questions because they were sent in so hey it's question time if you uh uh if you have questions for me maybe there's something about firefox you want to know or about you know software development or live hacking my setup my hardware anything um send me questions and the way you can do that is by in the rate this episode uh link which is in the agenda there's a section at the end where you can ask me questions and I will pull them out. And uh, if I can, I'll do my best to answer them. So these are some questions that came in recently. I'm going to give them a shot. Can you name some of your favorite websites? Favorite websites. Well, let's see. 
I guess if we go to like my top sites, <laughs> I, I go to the CBC a lot. And much to my chagrin, I also go to Hacker News. But I also go to YouTube. I also like use my calendar a lot. So like this gives you um, a, a sense of where I go, just my top sites. And I will periodically go to Amazon. I haven't been to eBay for a while. But I, I, I go and I read the news a lot. So I go to CBC. And uh, what else do I like to do? And I, I definitely watch videos on YouTube. I, I use Reddit, so I surf Reddit. Um, what others? So let me let me write a couple of these down. So like CBC.ca. I go to Reddit.com, YouTube. Um, where else do I tend to spend my time? I mean, I use Twitter a lot. Uh, now for like, when I was a kid growing up, there are sites that I really liked that, um, you know, I actually think Homestar is still doing stuff. Homestar Runner was like where I would go to like see cool stuff, funny cartoons, homestarrunner.com. It was also ended up being my like go-to flash test. Um, what's interesting about, uh, Homestar is that I believe they've started to use Ruffle. So like, before they would only have before flash died they would use like um flash and then when they found out that flash was dying they transitioned to a bunch of their stuff to um youtube videos but i believe they're using ruffle now like this is ruffle which is pretty great so they're able to continue using a lot all their old stuff you can get the sounds um and you can go like tunes except he's not saying it because it's a silent movie like, is there strong, bad emails? Yeah, like all this stuff. And this is happening with the magic of Ruffle, which is great. And Ruffle.rs. Ruffle.rs, which is a runtime for Flash built in the Rust programming language that runs not as a plugin, but it's just a runtime that you can embed in your website that will interpret a Flash, a flash video, which is pretty great. Because it means that a bunch of stuff that, you know, could have been just a casualty of the... I, here, Okay, I have to tell you, it's a good thing that f the Flash plugin is no longer installed on so many people's computers. It was a very, very easy way to have your machine compromised, to, uh, you know, have the stability of your browser impacted and the performance of your browser impacted. The Flash plugin allowed a lot of things that were great, like a lot of web experiences. It was how video used to work on the internet. It, like it was, it was a good start, but it was a closed source, buggy runtime, like binary blob that ran with like usually full user privileges and just executed random stuff on the internet. And it was a great way of infecting your computer with bad software. So uh, from a security and performance and like browser engineering standpoint, I am very happy that Flash was put out to pasture. And because I know people who used to maintain Flash, they're very happy <laughs> to put Flash out to pasture. But there was a lot of really cool stuff that was made with Flash. And so thank goodness that people put together Ruffle. Um, this is not the first attempt to like build a Flash runtime. I think Mozilla had a project called... Um, uh, what was it called? It was from a bunch of years ago. We had a, like a Mozilla Flash runtime. Uh, project. Shumway. We had something called Shumway way back in the day that we attempted to um, make work, but we just we couldn't get it to work. Uh, but the people, the fine people at Ruffle are making it work. And they've got funding. They've got sponsorship. Like, look at who is sponsoring. Uh, who's sponsoring? You've got all these people sponsoring it. So they're paying the people to work on it. It's not just volunteers and uh, who are, like, doing it in their free time. I'm, I bet they do have some volunteers, but there are people being paid to work on it and maintain it. They've got almost... They've got 85% of ActionScript 1 and 2. They've got 50% of ActionScript 1 and 2 API. They're starting to work on AVM2. Like, this is great stuff. So, you know, we might get to the point where, uh, you know, you can get, you can keep using Flash, but you don't need to use the Flash plugin. And that's a good thing.
So uh, Homestar Runner was another one of my favorite websites. And is there anything else? I think that's often where I go when I go on the internet. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Can I give some advice to people who recently entered adulthood? That's a big question. Wow, you recently entered adulthood. That means that you recently entered adulthood during a global pandemic. Um, do I have any advice? This is... When I was a teenager, uh, I was... I was, you know, and I think this is true of a lot of teenagers. I felt like I knew everything. I thought I'd figured out the world. Um, you know, I was all the dumb adults around me. Uh, you know, they they didn't know anything and I knew everything. Like that sort of thing. I had this attitude when I was a teenager. And I think a lot of teenagers have that attitude and maybe that's just part of being a teenager. But as you go into adulthood, I think it's important to it's important to realize that, yes, it's true that adults who uh, have authority and power over you sometimes don't know what they're doing and they're making it up as they go. And that a lot of people are making it up as they go. Uh, I'm currently making this up as I go. And that's just how it is. You know, we do our best, learn. But, we're, but there's no manual to life. You make it up as you go. What I would recommend is... Uh, look around to see who you want to be like and like find find the people that you want to be like and work on yourself so that you can be like them you know who are your heroes who are your the people you go oh wow like you are someone I want to be like and then just try and find a way of you know becoming like them sometimes that means faking it until you make it that's fine sometimes that's how you do it bootstrap by, and by that, I mean it's like pretend to be the thing, and then you become the thing. Um, also, be kind. Uh, like that That's just generally uh, good advice. Be kind to people. Um, there are lots of things floating around in my head that I could offer as advice, but this is a really broad question. I, but I, I, think, I think my... I'll sum this up by saying... No one knows what they're doing. We're all making it up as we go along. It's all okay. It's okay. <laughs> you're you're going to be fine. That's my advice. Uh, you can you can figure it out. Lots of people have figured it out. You can figure it out. Um, and help other people. Once you've figured out something, help other people figure it out. Um, do what you can to make other people... Like... Life is short. Help people. Live a good life. Read lots of books. Enjoy yourself, but help other people. There you go. What am I looking forward to in the coming months? Uh, so <laughs> long, uh, blathering, uh, unfocused uh, advice for about four, three minutes. That's what I gave. Uh, what am I looking forward to in the coming months? Well, you know, I, I'm hoping that eventually this pandemic, we can, like, wrap it up. That'd be nice. Um, I'm, I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen during the winter holiday. Because that's normally the time when I see lots of family. And for the past two... Was it two? No, it's just the one... The one winter holiday that I didn't get to see family. I'm wondering if this is going to be another winter holiday where I don't see family or if, if I, I, I will be able to see them. So I'm hoping I'm optimistic. You know, I'm vaccinated. All of my family's vaccinated, fully vaccinated. I'm hoping I'll be able to see family during the winter holiday. And so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and not just family, but my friends, I've got lots of friends, uh, you know, across Canada who normally come to Ontario during the winter holiday and I haven't been able to see them. They're all fully vaccinated. And I'm hoping that things are okay enough that I can see them. Even if it's at a distance. But just being able to see them would be great. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, anything else I'm looking forward to? 
Well, from Mozilla, uh, Mozilla wise, I I think there's um, we're doing a lot of uh, maintenance work. There's like uh, great stuff happening in the downloads panel that's being worked on by an outreachy intern. Um, there, it's not ready for testing yet, but it soon will be. And there's a pref improvements to download panel where all of this stuff is kind of being like packaged behind. And I'm like, don't use it yet, but it's coming. And those improvements are like just general, like life improvements to the downloads panel. I'm really excited for this, this, uh, outreach intern. Let me see if I can find their name. Um, yeah. Ava Katushka. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Ava has been working on the downloads panel, and uh, I'm hoping that stuff, we can turn it on soon. You can all test it out. Uh, so seeing friends and family, uh, download panel improvements are coming. Um, yeah, I think that's all I'm going to talk about right now. Oh, perf docs are outdated. Uh, under Talos, yes. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run mock lint l perf docs dash dash fix, but I'm gonna do it under testing Talos perf docs index dot rst, and let's see what happens. Is that gonna generate what I want? I hope it does. And let me see. Was there anything else? Those were the, all the questions. Thank you so much for all your questions. Send me more. Send me more. Uh, and let me put the pref name. I Now, I want to emphasize it's not ready for testing yet. But if you really want to, um, here you go. I don't know what's happening here. Uh, I think Perf Docs is really just thinking about it. I'm going to give it... 10 more seconds while we're waiting for it. I'm just going to check the live hacking channel. Is there anyone on Twitch or, or uh, in matrix, excuse me, uh, that has any questions before I close out? I'll just open the floor. Going once. Oh, here we go. Something's happening here. I don't see any questions coming in, so I think that's it. But I, I do want to see this through, this uh, this perf docs thing, and then we can put these patches up for review. Oh, a question just came in. Oh no, <laughs> had one yesterday, but can't remember. That's okay. That's okay. Um. Hey, do you want to see? So we're getting some we're getting some new hires. Um, starting next week, and I I started to put together a slide deck for them for like intro to Firefox engineering, and I was wondering if maybe during one of these streams I could just do a general um a general talk about like intro to Firefox engineering and like the mental model behind it, and I was wondering if this group would be interested in that. Let me know in the rate this uh uh in the the link in the agenda well not not evernote sorry but this rate this episode form let me know if that'd be interesting uh, because if so maybe uh maybe i could do a presentation not now uh i'll give you a sneak peek of the slide deck actually so here's the slide deck i started to put together and it's like hey what is a web browser and how do the teams work and the Firefox desktop front end. And I talk about what a web browser is and like how we divide things up um, and how the teams work with one another. Would this be interesting? Let me know if that would be interesting because maybe I can do a longer, I can use this deck and like do a, a presentation or something in an upcoming stream. Let me know in the form, in the rate this episode form. Okay, so uh, documentation was saved. I think we did it, folks. I think we figured it out. Under generated. Yeah, it did the removal. I could probably have done that manually, but whatever. Uh, so now I can commit this 
bug, uh, such and such, remove old XPI uh, generation. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to put this in a multi line comment. So, uh, hg commit. Remove old XPI generation uh, scripts and documents. Uh, these uh, documents, and you know what? There might actually be something else we can remove because I I think there was a um, generate T resize. I think there was a library called JZZip and XPI Gen. And if no nothing's using them. Yeah, we can get rid of XPI gen, and what about jszip.min.js? Yeah, we can get rid of those too. Oh, good, good, good. We can get rid of them. Okay. These documents and scripts were used um, to generate the add-ons for T resize and TART Talos tests before the great web extension conversion uh, nowadays if people really want to install these tests locally they can go to about debugging and load temporary add-on choose use load temporary add-on and browse to the manifest of the add-on folder okay so there are actually a couple more scripts we can get rid of we can remove uh, JS zip and uh, so let's get rid of those HGRM testing Talos Talos scripts we can get rid of JS zip and we can also get rid of XPI gen. What? Tell us, tell us scripts, XPI gen. And then we're going to get rid of this line in ESLint ignore. Uh, tell us. Then let's put this whole stack up for review and call it a day. Yes, goodbye, goodbye, JS Zip. We don't need you anymore. And XBI Gen, we don't need you either. Okay. Uh, I'm going to update the commit message. Remove old Talos XPI generation scripts and documents. Okay, let's push this stuff up and call her a day. Hey, thank you so much for watching episode 200 and what was this? 258 of The Joy of Coding. Uh, it was so great to hack with you. We actually got a bunch done today. We were able to fix this issue, and get a patch posted, and fix this issue and get a patch posted. And then uh, we went into this like long rabbit hole where I think I blathered on for like 10 minutes. But that's okay. Uh, next week, I can't stream. I'm not streaming next week um, due to unavoidable meetings. So I will see you the week after. Maybe take that opportunity. If, if you normally watch the stream, you could watch an older one. Or you could go into the... Uh, this my set of links here. You can maybe watch other people hack on things if you if you need your live hacking fix. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Let me just switch to this. Take care. Bye bye. The joy of coding. See ya.